page 245 in your textbooks, and you did number 10, E and G, as we were graphing ellipses. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look. I see yours. And there, I see hers. Excellent. All right, so page 245, number 10, E. They give us in the conic form the uh, ellipse. And how do I know just by looking at this equation? Oh, that's an ellipse. Because again, a test is coming in which these are going to be mixed up, right? I mean, right now we know it's an ellipse because it's in the ellipse section. But on quiz or test, how do we know it's an ellipse? They're both squared and they have a number that's different. They're both squared and they have different numbers and they're added. That's another important thing I keep mentioning. They're squared, added, and different numbers. So with the ellipse, what am I going to do to uh, to get myself ready to graph it, to get it into this elliptical form? Quentin? Where's the uh, group area to the more All right. So four is squared minus eight is All right, and then Jamie? Then we're going to complete the squares. Not yet. Oh, wait, we gotta factor out the um the coefficient of the first the one to squared. Good, we gotta factor off the coefficient of the squares. So we're gonna factor here a um, four times um x squared minus two x. There we go, and there will be that space, remember, and then here. And leave that space equals 23. And um, what do we put in those spaces, Quentin? One and one. One and one, positive again, anytime we complete the square. What do I add to the other side, Jamie? We add 13. Good. It's not a one, it's really got a value of four. This has a value of nine, so we're going to add a total of 13 to the other side. At this point, Quentin. Oh, you're by 33. Well, not oh, quite well, yet. Use your um, minority squares. Yeah, I suppose one could argue you could do all of that in one step. I'm for sake of showing it on the board. I'm going to go ahead and break it down. So yeah, let's get the binomial squared first. And then, as Quentin said, Jamie, we will divide by the 36. So we can set it equal to 1. Because that's my key, remember. Divide everything by the 36. We need the 1. And uh, what does it look like once we get it into this elliptical form? Jamie? Um, the x minus 4 squared over 9. Or 1, 2. And then um, the y minus 1 squared over 4 equals 1. There we go. We can go ahead and analyze this equation. Where's the center of the uh, ellipse? The book will use, by the way, origin, translated origin. That's technically what we're doing, but the center's half the origin. So I say translated center. book says translated origin. Whatever. Uh, where is the center or the translated origin going to be, Quentin? 1, 1. 1, 1. Uh, which axis is major here, Jamie? The X. The X axis, because that's the bigger uh, denominator. How big is the major axis, or maybe how big is each side of the major axis, Quentin? Three. Three each. And then for the minor axis, Jamie? Two each. Two each. Um, what about the focal length? How do we find that again, Quentin? It's C equals the square root of A squared minus B squared. Excellent. So in this case, it's the square root of five. Square root of five, which for graphing purposes, we'll say that's approximately 2.2. All right, and then uh, the last thing, of course, is how big are the half lateral recta? Uh, what's the equation we use, Jamie? Um, we use b squared over um, b squared over a. B squared over a, and we get um, four thirds. Four thirds. So for graphing purposes, that's approximately one and a third. One and a third. You could say one point three would be close enough as well. It's not part of the graph necessarily, but uh, if I wanted to find the eccentricity. Again, a circle always has an eccentricity of yeah. zero, and a parabola always has an eccentricity of one. But the ellipse isn't always one or always zero. It's a range of values. So, you know, finding the eccentricity is a little bit um, more interesting, I guess, for the ellipse, which is why we didn't do it so much for the others, but we have here. How do I find eccentricity? C over A. Good, focal length over the half lattice rectum, which C, we said, is the square root of five. 
and a class is no, three. three. So uh, I know we weren't, didn't have to find it last night. Find it real quick for me. What is the eccentricity of this particular ellipse going to be? 0. 0.745. 0. 0.745? Mm -hmm. Okay, so about 0. 0.75. So that's, that's reasonably high. It's super high, right? We looked at a couple yesterday where the eccentricity was around 0. 0.9 something. Those were a real pain. This isn't going to be quite as bad. Um, so what we should have done, of course, is go to 1, 1. And uh, we'll draw lightly a new x prime axis. Uh, one could argue you don't have to draw the axis, but again, it just helps me to remember. This is where the foci are going to be. This is where the vertices are going to be. It gives me something to draw lateral erect or perpendicular to. So I liked it. Don't technically have to, I don't suppose. Should have gone three in each direction along the major axis. Up and down two for the minor axis. Out 2.2. .2 for the foci up one and a third, down one and a third, and uh, again, start the vertices. And this is always the hard corner to get. Um, and, uh, something like that. We had a small ellipse like that, correct? Mm -hmm. I believe I remembered seeing that on your paper's questions on the first one. All right, well, let's go to the other part of the homework, which was number 10G. Number 10. G. And uh, let's see, for this one, ah, it's a lot shorter. Uh, 25x squared plus 9y squared equals 150 Hmm. Jamie? Um, first we need to move the line to be um, at some that's a negative. All right, and where do we put it? Next to the x squared. Good. We're going to put it right with the x squared negative, 150x, uh, because we're going to group the x's. And then there aren't y's to group, and there's nothing left over here but Zero. zero, I guess, right? So kind of a little bit of a weird start, but uh, we're going to solve it like we would anything else here. Quentin, now we need to... Vector of constant. So 25 times the square of my uh, Or six. There we go. And then here, I mean, do we really need to factor out the 9? I mean, there's nothing. Let's leave the 9 y squared, I guess. Oh, we put a zero. What do we complete the square with, Jamie? Uh, positive 9. Positive 9, but I don't add 9 to the other side. What gets added to the other side, Quentin? Uh, 225. A 225 gets added to the other side. So then I'll keep the 25, but I'm going to turn this into the binomial squared class. X minus 3. Okay, and here, of course, we have the 9y squared all equal to 225. Quentin, we now need to? Divide everything by 225. And what does that end up getting us? Uh, x minus 3 squared over 9 squared y squared over 25. There we go. Do we get this equation, first of all? Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, let me tell you what. I'll switch to pink for contrast here. Uh, where is the center of the ellipse, or the translated origin, we might say, Jamie? Um, it's 3, 0. All right. Again, if nothing's added or subtracted, you could write y minus 0. I'm too lazy to, but you could. Good job on that. What about the major axis? Which one, Quentin? Y up to All right, so this one's going up and down rather than side to side like the last one did. Um, the uh, length of each side of the major axis, Jamie? Um, five. Good. It's going to be five each in the major axis, Quentin? Three. Three each. Focal length ends up being, Jamie? Four. Exactly four. And then uh, the half lateral recta end up being what, Quentin? 1.8. Yeah, 9 fifths, which is exactly 1.8. Um, again, it didn't ask, but for the eccentricity, what do we end up with here? 1 and 3. No, it's 2 over 8. So 2 over A. 0 0.8. 0 0.8. 4 over 5, so 0 0.8. So this is going to be a little bit longer and narrower than the last ellipse we drew. Uh, again, I wouldn't say this is necessarily circular, but it's closer to circular than this next one's going to be. So we should have started at 3, 0 here on the x-axis. 
but my major axis is the y. So we're going to draw very lightly a y prime axis. And then we'll go up and down 5, out 3 in each direction. So going right through the origin. Foci are at 4 up and down, and then through there almost 2, a little shy of 2, to the ends of the lateral recta. And get an ellipse that looks something like that. I get my tracing over again, kind of smoothing out those lines. And with that ellipse there, and I believe I remember seeing that on your papers. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Questions at all on that? All right. Let's take a look at some uh, questions, some thinking questions. Kind of like we did for the circle and the parabola, where we have to figure out the equation. Number 11 there on page 245. Number 11 on page 245. Um, read the directions in for number 11 and then also read part B. So read the directions and part B. Jamie? Find the equations in the ellipses giving the following B plus side, 3 plus minus 8, 2, major axis equals 34. All right. So if we want to solve the equation of an ellipse, what do we need? Mm. Think about what's in the equation of an ellipse. We need an a squared and b squared. Right. We need to know what is a squared. We need to know what is b squared. And furthermore, we need to know... Well, okay, we, do, we also need to know the center. We need to know x1, y1. But uh, kind of on that note of a squared and b squared, we also need to know which one's which, don't we? Which one is a squared? Which one is b squared, right? Um, wh how do we arrange them? So what's the length of a squared? What's the b squared? And what's the, ce the center or the origin of the um, ellipse? Well, like I suggested with the parabola, Drawing a uh, quick sketch will help us to kind of think these things through. And let's look at what they gave us in B. Jamie said the foci are at 3 plus or minus 8, 2. Hmm. So what are the two foci? Um, 11, 2. 11, 2, and negative 5, 2. Does that make sense? So we draw a quick sketch here, and we've got, wow, 11, 2, and negative 5, 2. These are the foci. Now, that doesn't come into here, does it? But it's significant because if the foci are oriented like that, then the center, be the center would have to be midway between. So I can use that to get the center or the origin of the ellipse. So again, here we're at 11, 2. Here we're at negative 5, 2. What's exactly in the middle? How far apart are these two points? 16. 16, so the midpoint would have to be 8 away from it. 3, 2. Now, did you see when they described the foci, they said 3 plus or minus 8, 2. 3, 2. So plus or minus 8 tells you how far out from there to move to the foci. So we do know the center here is going to be 3, 2. So I know I'm going to have an x minus 3 squared over something plus y minus 2 squared over something equals 1. Right? So far so good? Um, by the way, I also know something else. Major axis. Is which one? The x. So the a squared has to go under the x because clearly the major axis runs along the x direction. So this is where my a squared is going to go, whatever it is, and that's where my b squared is going to go. Now, is 8 a or b? Neither. Remember, a goes all the way out to the vertices. That's a. What's 8? That's the focal length, so we would represent that. C, and uh, that ain't in here. 
Okay, so the eight isn't one of the numbers that's going to go in here. Um, there is more information, though. They tell me the major axis is 34. Now, that means from vertex to vertex is 34. Well, how can we represent that major axis length? 2a, right? Which means then that a from center to vertex is, and this is clearly not drawn to scale, but it doesn't have to be, it's just for reference, 17. So I do know a squared. 289. That's ugly. I just don't know b squared. minus b squared. And I know c is 8, so 8 equals the square root of a squared, which we just said was 289, minus b squared. At your seats. Figure out what the b squared is. I don't even care what b is. I just care what b squared is. which means that B is 15. So this ellipse goes 17 in each direction, 15 in each direction, and uh, we're not graphing it, fortunately, okay, because that'd be a really big ellipse. Uh, I'm curious, I didn't ask when we're done, we found the equation, and no, I'm not going to multiply everything by the LCD to get it in a comic form. I had a number in the tens of thousands, okay? Uh, I, I don't need that in my life. So we'll leave it just like this. Forget the comic form, because I'm that lazy. Um, what's the eccentricity, though? Eight, seventeen. Squidditch has a decimal. Yeah, so a little under half. I mean, it's still not close to zero, right? And you've got 15, or 30 technically tall, by 34 wide. I mean, it's not that much wider than it is tall, and yet the eccentricity still isn't approaching zero yet. So you can imagine how perfectly circular it must be to have an eccentricity that low. Questions on this? All right, let's take a look at letter A now. And uh, Quentin, what do they tell us about the ellipse this time? Okay. O prime is their way of talking about a translated center or translated origin. We'll call it the center. Um, and uh, you said it was what? One, three. One, three. And then you said, well, in that case, class, I already know a lot. All right, so I know most of the equation, right? It's just the two bottom numbers. Uh, it also tells me. Oh. Well, if the major axis is 10, then that means each side is 5. So what's the major axis? Or uh, what's the a squared, excuse me? 25. 25. And um, if the minor axis is 6, that means it's. B squared is 9. So A squared is 25. B squared is 9. Which one's which, though? Uh, one, five goes under the five. Sure. There's no way to know, right? So literally here, it's either this equation or, based on the information given, there wasn't enough information to conclusively give us one ellipse. Based on the given information, there could be two ellipses. That would satisfy the locus information given, so to speak. So it could be either this or this. And in this case, there just happened to be two ellipses from the given information. 
All right, questions on that? All right, let's take a look at letter C. And uh, Jamie, what do they tell us about the ellipse, or possibly, as we saw here, the ellipse is plural? Um, it says versus negative 6. 1 plus or minus 13, I'm going to say this is equal to 10. 1 plus or minus? Well, uh, we have a negative 6. Oh, okay. I missed the negative 6. 1 plus or minus. I heard 1 plus or minus 13, and then you stopped. I'm like, well, but what's the y? I missed the negative 6. Negative 6, 1 plus or minus 13, and then uh, minor axis equals 10. Um... So then, if the vertices are negative 6, 1 plus or minus 13, we could say that... Uh, it should be 14, 9, 14. There we go. So negative 6, 14, negative 6, negative 12. So uh, kind of a quick sketch. We didn't even need a quick sketch last time. But backward 6, up 14, backward 6, down 12. These are my vertices. Um, okay? Couple implications. Major axis is the y axis. Major axis is definitely the y axis. So uh, the a squared goes under the y. Right? I just went up 13 and down 13 from it. So that is your translated center, negative 6, 1. Okay, so in that case, I know, I know how to start the equation then. I'm not done with it yet, but I know a lot of it. X plus, or, yeah, x plus 6 squared equals y minus 1, or plus y minus 1 squared equals 4. And I even know the a squared is going to go under here. So I'm not getting two different ellipses. I can only get one. That's good to know. All right. Your b squared is 25. Good. b must be 5, so therefore b squared, which has to go under the x, is 25. The a squared is 169. And again, I'm not going to convert to the conic form because I'm just lazy. It didn't last two times either. And there we go. So you're just piecing it through, thinking it through logically. We can derive our equation. Let's do one more of these. Uh, letter E. Letter E. See what we got here. Both are is negative one, one plus or minus twelve. All right, so f and f prime. Said what? Negative one, one plus minus twelve. Lovely. Okay. Then your minor x is seven. Woo! All right. Um, I feel like we did one like this already. Kind of. Letter B was a lot like this, except we did a major axis, not a minor axis. All right, um, thoughts? Um, well, you know your b squared. Well, you can find it. b is 35. All right. I don't know where to put it yet, but, you know, I got b squared. the foci are out 12 from negative 1, 1. In which direction? Uh, up, up, down, because it's in the y. Ah, oh, okay, so major axis is y. Okay, that helps a little bit. That helps a lot bit. Um, x, x plus, plus 1. 
We've got negative 1, 13. Oh, there's the center, negative 1, 1. And then down here at negative 11, these are the foci. Which means this focal length is the focal length is 12. Focal length, 12, 12. Now the um, uh, B is 35, and these are the ends of the minor axis, okay? The major axis extends beyond the foci, correct? But how far? So, careful. What is C? Oh, okay. It's the focal length, which is obviously 12, right? Because you're going from center up and down 12 to foci. So 12 equals the square root of. Um, well, careful. The B squared is 1,225. A squared minus 1,225. It's Sibian. Which means, how big is each side of the major axis? Take square root. 37. 37. So the whole thing is 74 units long. Now, uh, I'm curious again about the eccentricity. We know the focal length is only 12. The major axis, we said, is 37 each. If we took the time to graph this one, this would be the lowest eccentricity we've had yet. 32. I'm not sure why I put parentheses on that. Uh, 0.324. That would be our lowest eccentricity yet if we took the time to graph it. But uh, for obvious reasons, 35 and 37 just in each direction just is not happening on our graph paper. I don't think it could if we wanted to. We don't have a piece of graph paper big enough. Um, you know, take pieces together. We're not that dedicated. We don't care that much. Um, <laughs> uh, questions on that? All right. Tell you what. I want to do one more. I said we were only going to do one more. And I have always skipped letter D. I've never done letter D, but I'm like, have I ever had a smarter couple of young people than Quentin and Jamie? I don't know. So if ever there was a group where we could tackle letter D, I think it might be this group. So let's figure this out. Let's look at letter D, because it just looks cool. Oh yes, we got this. All right, so uh, give it information. Is See, we already know how it starts out. <laughs> it's minus five squared and y squared equals one. See, look at that. We're off to a flying start here. Um, minor axis, it says, is 14. All right, so I know I've got a b squared of 49. Where does it go? That I don't know. And then the last piece of information is the reason I've always skipped this. Eccentricity is 0.96. Hmm. So that's the ratio of c to a. Point nine six. But I don't know C or A. You can find it using the C equals the square root of A squared and A squared equation. Okay, so C equals the square root of A squared minus B squared. I do at least know the B squared. 49. But I don't know the C or the A. But I could represent A as well a and I could represent C as 0.96 a that would give me that ratio of 0.96 wouldn't it so if I call this 0.96 a and I call this a which of course is squared I could then square both sides, square both sides. now it's not gonna be pretty but we've got our calculator to do the hard work for us let's square it 
0.9216 Can I square this side? I'll pull a double switch here. Let's send the 49 over as a and send the 0.9216a squared over as a negative combined with a 1. 0.0784a squared. Two steps to get the a. Right. So what do we get? Um, actually, you know what? I don't. I don't care about a. I want a squared. Just divide by 0 0.0784. And what do we get for a squared? You come, yours came out evenly to 625? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 625. Ah, okay, so here's the question then. Which is major? It doesn't matter. Again, they didn't give us enough information to know. So I actually have two equations. The 625 goes here and the 49 here, or we end up with the 49 here and the 625 here. See, that wasn't so bad. That wasn't so, you know, that gives me, we got letter, I think we got letter F, don't we? That's another one, I've never done those two, D and F. Now, oh, D admittedly is the one that's always kind of mystified me, the eccentricity, I've always been like, I just don't have time. But I'm like, oh, they're so smart, it'd be a shame not to. Oh, let's see, do we have time for letter F? It's not a whole lot of time. Okay, well, never mind. Um, we will, uh, let's do this instead. Let me go and give you your, uh, your homework. And uh, page 245, number 10, D and F. Page 245, number 10, D and F. And we will take a look at that in our next lesson. Page 245, number 10, D and F. Also, have a quiz in our next lesson as we wrap up ellipses. So uh, we'll take care of that. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And when the bell rings, you are dismissed.